You guys tell me when you're ready. Good? All right. First of all, congratulations to Syracuse. I thought they played a really tough physical game like I thought they would. Um, they played within themselves. Um, the first quarter was a, we had a lot of opportunities to take a lead and to really take control of the game, and we didn't. And to their credit, they took control in the second quarter. They, they played tough and hard and with some confidence, and, and we didn't. And uh, third quarter, I was really proud of the team. We could have packed it in, down 20 points, just given up, and we didn't. You know, Lauren Park Lane, you know, led the charge along with, you know, some, some of our other players, and I was really proud of that. Um, and we made a great run, had it down to um, nine. They get an N1 out of a timeout, but we still didn't give up. At 11 at the end of the third quarter was fine. And we only wanted to get to 10 at the end of the third quarter, so we were right there. And then they won seven straight points off to start the fourth quarter. And then at that point, we knew we were climbing uphill. Um, you know, I, I just, first of all, Lauren, you know, she was amazing. I, I don't care what her numbers were in this game. I thought this was one of her best games of the year. And, um, you know, I was really proud of her for that. And, 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 I, and I thought Maya Bembry battled and Ozana battled. And, you know, the team did as well. You know, we're disappointed. We had a lot of opportunities to make some shots and we missed them. Um, but you got to credit Syracuse. They're very well coached. Um, they have really good players and uh, shows our deficiencies again. We have 19 offensive rebounds. It's been a problem all year. We turned the ball over. I said we cannot turn the ball over and give them easy baskets. And we probably did that five or six or seven times. You know, when you do those things, you struggle. Um, but we learned from it. It was a great, you know, uh, experience. I thank our administration for getting the game. We won 19 games this year. You know, we lost four games in the last minute. We didn't, you know, we could have won 23, 24 games. Been the, you know, but those are things that we've got to learn and bounce back from. And, uh, you know, the team we put on the, on the court next year, I think we'll have a lot more experience in, in these type of games. So that's it. And I thank you all for coming. And I really want a special thank out. Thank you to Matt Sweeney, who did a great job this year and really, really um, took care of me and, and, and did a great job with all our media requests and everything. You know, I don't know, Bobby. You know, a great for our season, I don't know. You know, you know, people want to make the tournament. People, we, had a, we did a lot of good things. 19 wins. You know, we lose at the buzzer in the Big East quarterfinals. We lose in the last minute to Princeton, Columbia. You know, we beat St. John's in the NCAA team twice. We beat Georgia in the NCAA team. We beat, you know, um, yeah, Marquette in the NCAA team. So, you know, we're right there. Um, you know, right now I haven't thought about that. It's certainly not, you know, an F, but it's certainly not an A. And, you know, I got to do a better job of getting us to be, get over the hump. And, and I will. That's a great question. What are we looking to improve? We need to rebound the ball. You know, we need to figure out as a team that are coming back to rebound the ball and, you know, going out and, and figuring out who we bring into the program, whether it's some of our freshmen that we have signed or going into the portal, we need to rebound the ball. I think that will be the first thing that I look for when bringing in another player is just how aggressive are you rebounding the ball? Because that's certainly been an Achilles heel. Um, you know, we have some tremen three tremendous freshmen coming in. Um, I'm sure we'll do well in the portal. Um, but we want this group of girls to grow from it and get better. You know, we love this team and we love the girls on it. It's been the most enjoyable team I've coached in a long time. So they have to get better rebounding and we have to be get better coaching them and getting them better. You know, Marvin, you know, we're, we're obviously friends, and but the work you do and the, I, I've said this to you all, all the time, the questions you ask are so introspective and, and so important, and he's right. Our, our lulls in intensity are unacceptable. And one of the questions we talked about in, in the Creighton game after we lost that game, the Xavier game, the game before we won, and the game that we played here against St. Joe's, you never saw a lull in intensity. Even when we were trailing or St. Joe's would go on a run, it wasn't because of our lull of intensity. 
And here we did. We had a lull of intensity because we lose our confidence. And damn it, we can't do that. We, we, we can't. And we tried as a staff to instill that at some point from – you within, you have to have confidence. We have really good players. They're good basketball players. They have to believe it. And we lost our intensity in that second quarter because the first quarter we weren't making shots. It was still close. They hit a couple of baskets, and we just went downhill after that. And that's not okay. It's not. It's not okay on their end. It's not okay on our coaching end. And, again, I'm not just sitting down and being like, oh, they scored. I'm still coaching. And I'm trying to lead that by example. But we have to learn from them. We have to get better. But, Marvin, you're right. Our low intensity cost us this game. No question. They scored 26 points in the second quarter. Like I said to them in the locker room when we watched the video, and our, and our um, um, GA, Mike Lofner, does a great job of setting the video up. When we watched that video, we saw three, four, five times where our lack of intensity, toughness, they scored. They scored 15 points because we didn't do it. You take out those 15 points, we're down six, seven points to half. Who cares? We make our run in the third quarter, now we're winning. Now the game's completely different. But that's a big problem. It's something that's certainly been addressed, but it has to be addressed in the postseason, has to be addressed in the summer, has to be addressed in the fall, because you can't play like this at this level to be an NCAA team. It got us to 19 wins. But again, we talked about this with the Villanova game here, the Creighton game here, we had our lulls. It's the same thing. And our kids are too good players for that to be. And I'm not going to sit here and sugarcoat anything. We have to do a better job as a staff, and we have to do a better job as a team to fight through those lulls, because they caught, that cost us today. I think Syracuse is very good, and they played well, but our lulls really, at the end of the day, were, were the reason we lost. And you could all see it. It's not the energy we play with. Well, I advise her to hopefully come back and play here for another year. So, so hopefully she will. And, uh, you know, we're going to have a talk. And like I said, you know, her parents are amazing people. And um, I, I want Lauren to stay, yes, because she's a great player. She's a great person. And I love Lauren. I, I do. And you love her. Why? Because she scored points. That had zero to do with her points. It has to do with her being a great teammate, loving Seton Hall, you know, wanting to coach with me down the line. I do. I want her to be my assistant coach, my guard coach, my recruiting coordinator eventually, and I'd love her to be the head coach here one day down the line. I really would. She's a bright woman. She brings a lot to the table that you guys can't see. No, it's not your fault, but she is. So I would love for her to complete her playing career here and morph her into being an assistant coach and then hopefully one day to be the head coach here. And then I could sit there and be the director of basketball ops and it's amazing and uh, it'll be great. But she's a great kid, and I, I would tell her, you know what, you've pretty much hit every mark here, except we got to get to the NCAA tournament. And hopefully, you know, she'll come back and, and lead us. Because I know she's, a, she's, she's determined to do that. Azana Baines has improved tremendously. That's a great question. You know, at the end of the day, Azana missed six weeks um, with a foot injury, so she missed from the beginning of October all through the middle of November and never got in a groove. But we challenged Azana to a 40 for 40. It's 40 days of practice on your own. I mean, um, 40 days of practice in a row for 40 minutes a day, even on your off day. Come in, do your 40 minutes on your own. You know she didn't miss a day, not one day, not one day. And I started it, and after I started it, two days in, she played four minutes in a game. And I'm like, here we go. The next day she's not going to show up. She called that night and said, what time are we coming in? She worked every day, and you know she averaged 15 points, seven or eight rebounds after that. And yeah, she struggled at times today, eight and eight. She knows she could be better, but she's going to be a dynamite first team all conference player in my mind here at Seton Hall. Like, we have a great building block with her. And I thought she improved tremendously. And, and you know, I, I, I thought, you know, Jayla Jordan's got a lot of potential in this program. You know, she makes mistakes, she gets frustrated, but again, eight rebounds today in 14 minutes, and, and is a great kid. Tries her best. Never answers back. She's wonderful. And we're lucky. I, and I think we have a lot of other kids with improvement. I thought Amari made a lot of great strides. Um, but again, she's, she's got to fight through her frustrations. And if she does that, she's an outstanding player. But she's got to be able to do that. But she did have a, a great steps this year as well. Yeah. yeah, and you know, Victoria's defense you know, got greatly improved, and I thought she did a lot of good things. You know, obviously she didn't shoot the ball to our Kate Billies, and she'd tell you that. But, you know, she, she's, she's got a lot of ability. She's another one, though, that has to fight through those lulls. I mean, Marvin will tell you, he sees it out there. 
the last two players I mentioned, they could be a dynamite backcourt in this league, but they can't be if they don't fight through the lulls. And they have to. And they have to figure it out themselves. It's not about Coach B anymore. It's not about the staff. At some point, you got to walk in. Like, that was the one thing I loved watching Deja Fair today. She was hurt. You could tell she wasn't 100%, but she knew she was a good player. So she knew when she had to make a shot, I'm going to shoot her with confidence. Sometimes she made it, sometimes she made it, missed it. You just can't hang your head when something goes wrong. You can't hang your head at all. And I think those two have a lot of ability, but they have to take a step forward and do those things. It's important. I think that's a big thing with Lauren and you know we've shared a lot of conversations we have to be much more accountable as a team not even accountable on being in better shape taking care of your body getting your proper rest not hanging your head when you make a mistake that's on them they have to take accountability for that themselves I can't follow them around our school does a great job supplying them everything they need and we have a staff that's a wonderful group of people my associate head coach is, is, is just a tremendous person and a tremendous recruiter and the rest of my staff has done an amazing job as well. And um, you know, my GAs, Christy and um, Michael, set everything up for these girls and do everything that they need. But at some point, they have to take some accountability, Marvin. And again, we don't want to be an NIT team again, and we are because we don't take enough of, of pride in fighting through, accountability of, of being together and doing those things. And I love my kids, I, I do. I, I think they're a wonderful young women and I'm so proud of them. I mean, 19 wins to get to the second round of the NIT, to get in the NIT, people are like, oh, you got in the NIT. There's not a lot of people get in the NIT. I don't see DePaul in it, I don't see more um, Providence in it, I don't see Xavier in it, I don't see, you know, um, you know, uh, uh, I'm forgetting somebody else um, in, in it as well. We, we got in it. And that's important. And you look around the rest of the leagues. I mean, not a lot of ACC teams in it either. So, but we have to do a better job. And I talked about that. And we have to probably instill a lot more toughness in the kids. You know, we're very afraid in this day and age. Well, you know, you don't want to have a box out drill. You don't want to have this. And we're very like, but like, we got to get back to our toughness drills. As a coaching staff, we have to do a better job. And as a players, we have to get tough. Because again, would we give up 19 offensive rebounds today? That stinks. It wasn't because we don't try, we had 14, but we don't try consistently, we're not physical enough, we've got to get in the weight room, we've got to get bigger, better, and stronger. And we can, it's not for lack of ability. If it was lack of ability, I'd be like, geez, you know, I've sat up here years ago and it wasn't, we, I was like, we're just not that good. Yeah, we're, we're good enough. And you know, certainly if Lauren is leading this team, we have every bit of chance. And I know if Lauren comes back to lead this team, we damn well better have uh, tough-minded kids around her. Thank you all for everything. You've all been wonderful. I thank you. I, I, can't, I can't tell you what a great job all of you do. Ray coming up all this, all this distance and, 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 and everyone at SOU has been amazing and Pirate TV. I, I just can't thank you enough. And again, I, Matt is not just you know, someone who's a sports information person. He's my friend. And when you get to work with your friend, that's a lot better. And he protects me and he tells me to shut up and it's great. All right, but thank you everyone, and uh, hopefully we'll have a um, couple more press conferences with some awards that uh, some of our girls are going to win. Thank you again. Thank you.